Next step in the process is to put the main bore in, the scallop for the steam port, and the bolt pattern that secures it to the standard or allows the head to attach to the cylinder. Now I made up a little plug here, not a plug, but a little disc that is the same size as the comfortable tangent diameter of the end of this cylinder. And this is going to come into play, it's going to be real handy in helping me align this once I have the machine set. There is a very specific center line from the steam chest uh, gasket surface to the center of the bore. So that's an easy one to find. Simply edge find it, move over, and there you go. But then moving back and forth, I'm not going to run an indicator around the outside casting. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to line it up till it's flush. And I'm going to indicate this. That'll give me my x-axis because I'm going to do it this way. So it'll give me my x-axis. And the y-axis will be done with an edge finder. Everything else from that point forward is pretty straightforward. And there's a considerable amount of material to come out of here. So take your time and uh, do what you got to do. As far as clamping it in the machine. With sufficient pressure to hold the part and not crush the part. I'm going back to the old loop saddle whatever you want to call it and I'm going to bank back on that cylinder right there now you may be saying well what if that cylinder is not straight not that yada yada well that's why the back of this is domed in two directions so we're basically three points of contact and it doesn't matter if this is cocked it'll still seat nicely without influencing the part let's get over to the mill get creative on the setup indicate this thing in and go into fast forward mode and get this done and that means this side up, in case you're curious. TSU. I think that's university too, isn't it? The y-axis is now set to the center of the hole, but it's not centered on the X to the body of the casting. That's next. <laughs> and that is seriously ugly, but that's just so that the indicator doesn't move the puck. I want the puck flush on either side and flush in the front. I'll zero the indicator against the front of the puck without moving the table. And then I'll know what to look for on either side. So we'll make sure that puck is flush. Flush and flush. And flush in the front would be nice as well. Most important. that puck is just about as flush as it's going to get based on the potential irregularities of the casting but now you can see with it flush in the front and the sides I can move the entire table back and forth until I have the same reading all the way across and that'll put me right on center of that bore This boring operation is going to take more than its fair share of passes, so I'll make a couple of passes and cut right to the end. Bear with.
Uh, when I remove this part from this vise, I'll keep my fingers crossed that I did put enough pressure to hold it, but not crush the bore, because if the bore is distorted now, when I release the pressure, this pin will not go in. And ideally, the fit that I'm looking for, this is a 750 gauge pin, I want to be able to put my finger over the port on the other side and just have it hang there from suction. That's a pretty good fit. I like that. Let's move on to the scallop in the back. That is the origination and termination point for the port that will go through to the ports on the bottom side where the steam chest is. Now it's just a matter of drilling and tapping a bunch of holes in a pattern. That's kind of boring, so we'll just cut right to the end and take a look at this piece. An in focus look at this piece on the bench. Let's check the fit. If I put my thumb over that hole, I should be able to lift that plug off the bench. There you go. I guess I got a hole in my thumb. There you go. Airtight. I like it. Okay, moving right along, we're going to put the oblique holes in this part right now, and I came up with 33 degrees. That's the number that I developed on my model, and that's the number I'm sticking with. We are going to put this piece in the vise this way, and cock the vise, and come straight down on it, connecting the little scallop on the end with the end port without hitting the center, and without ruining our entire day and possibly the rest of the weekend. So, here's how that's going to go. My CAD drawing. Tooling ball. I'm going to go over this in a second. Tooling ball, 33 degrees. Once you indicate a tooling ball, you're right on center with the feature that you want if you've done your math right. If not, well, then you've got a little bit more math to do than simply indicating a tooling ball. But I decided to incorporate this number right here, 6, 32, and 7 tenths, into my tooling ball setup. I know that this ball is 500 from the center of the ball to this land right here. So if I take 500 off of this, it leaves me at 132, 133-ish. That's the thickness of this edge right here. So by sticking this in here, I now have this dimension. And when you put this inside the cylinder, there you go. A hard set ball, 632 and 7 off the surface. When it's cocked up in a second vise in a vise at 33 degrees, right here, all I need to do is indicate that ball, take everything out, and come straight down in that little hole right there. Now, it certainly sounds good on paper, right? Let's go over to the machine and watch it happen. I might need this. Currently a vise in a vise. The vise is 33 degrees. I have angle blocks under the bottom, locating on the bottom of this. So this is nice and tight using a rod across the outside of the cylinder to make sure that it registers flat against this side. It is very important that everything register nice and tight. Make sure that happens. This is strictly for demonstration purposes. This was prepared off camera a couple minutes ago. Pick a spot on the tooling ball that you're comfortable with and sweep the ball. Look for a constant reading on the indicator. Lock everything down. If 
If the indicator needle isn't moving, wiggle the indicator back and forth to make sure it's not stuck or maxed out. Remove everything. And if the stack height on this plug and this ball are correct, when the tool comes down, it's going to come down right directly in that pocket. Because I'll have a hard time seeing inside that pocket. I'm going to stick a post-it note in there. And when that post-it note starts to jiggle around, I'm going to know that that drill has popped through. First operation, though, is to spot face the inside of the scallop with an end mill so that the drill has something true to locate from. There we go. I'm going to say that that broke through that pocket just nice. Got to do this three more times. Oh, just for yucks, let's take it out and take a look. Feature landed right where I wanted it to land. These are a couple of gauge pins so we can take a look at how it breaks through. supposed to. And when this guy is all populated, it looks like this. -da -da -da. Like Swiss cheese, right? Look at that thing. Let's throw a pin in that four. Now that is an awful lot of work for a small part and it's not done. There's a side port that needs to go in here. I believe that's the exhaust port. And I'm going to put that in at a later date. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's well, stick around after the rolling credits if you want to see this thing go together. I'm going to put these on top of the standards just because i got to see how it looks. Can't do this much work and not get some type of play around satisfaction out of it. Anyway, there you go. That is what the cylinders look like when they are just about done. I hope you got something out of this video. And I'm going to close out again by saying, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and happy and safe. All of the above. Me, I am really hot today, and I am out of here. So thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out. And to everybody that's commented about the rotation of the holes.
would appear since the steam chests are out. And the single hole is here. Well, it goes like this. Let's go handheld for a second here, see if I can make you a second. 